Brothers and sisters, we know that in our lives we live in this world, the times of friendship and affection which has held us together physically are not in wrath but cease to find what you call them. Confident that our God always rules the good that we have done and forgives us our sins with the Spirit of God as we have gathered down to Himself. Almighty and eternal Lord, in our grief and our sorrow we turn to you, O God of love, who opens the ears to all who call. This is our prayers for the Lord of whom you have called for in this world, leading with your king and your king of life and peace, and cut among your saints and glory to Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, with confidence of faith in the power and glory of the cross and resurrection, we pray. Risen Lord, you are the path and the mark of our life to heaven, and Lord, have mercy. And Lord, have mercy. You are the promise and hope of we shall be, and Lord, have mercy. Son of God came to this Christ in his death, and Lord, have mercy. Lord of God, Lord of death, and deliver us from the fear of death, and Lord, have mercy. Crucify, Lord, and thy trust to us, for sake and glory, you are raised in, for sake and death, and raised in glory, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, written to the shed the good rest of our souls, give peace to God forever, we pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To bless those who mourn or in pain, bless on the court. Bless, bless as we gather here in this afternoon, especially all the grand family, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord God, we all find refuge. We preach your bondless love and mercy. Grant the soul of our brother, Karma, kindly welcome the cleansing of sin, and then release you, change of death, and then enter into life for the last time. I pray we make to Christ our Lord.
that God we have here. And that's why we often say when we see people coming here into church, going out to the cemeteries, we're praying for them. We, and this, we're continuing the great act of intercession in praying for the if they have not reached the fullness, as I say, of, of peace with God in the kingdom of heaven. So that's uh, why we pray. So we gather to pray for the soul of John. So now this afternoon as we gather in this sort of cold, uh, weak, uh, bleak afternoon with sleek and snow and semi-snow falling, but we now realise as well, we take comfort and hope that our faith reassures us that one day in hope we pray that there will be reunion as well of us all together again with, with God in his kingdom. So now we begin to realise eh, always that our journey is still incomplete for our imperfections, our weaknesses and our sins. We call our sins to mind. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sin in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord, O oh God. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Lord God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for our brother John, whom you have called forth to journey to you, since he hoped and believed in you. Grant that he may be led to our true homeland, to the light in its everlasting joys. And our prayer we make to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So Martin, I know you've been entrusted with the first day of the readings, so please come forward. I hope you're able to hear us outside there in the car park, via the speakers. I hope you're, uh, the car, you're comfortable enough in the cars. It's not a very nice day to be inside, but I hope you have heaters on in the car. And to those of you who are linking, we'll be linking us here via the web, the internet. This afternoon, uh, I hope you will join that uh, you'll be getting us loud and clear. So welcome join with us here this afternoon. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honourable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding this is man's grey hairs, untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life. He saw been pleasing to the Lord, he has taken him quickly. Yet people look on uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection for his holy ones. The word of the Lord.
Anglican reading. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. The word of the Lord. in an election and the life says the Lord whoever believes in me will never die the Lord be with you and also with you are reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emos, seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side. But something prevented them from recognizing him. When they were near the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and while they were with him at table, he took the bread and said the blessing, and then he broke it and handed it to them. Their eyes were opened until they recognized him, but he had vanished from their sight. And then the two said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us? as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us. They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions who said to them, Yes, it is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. And then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread, the gospel of the Lord. Now, the episode of the Gospel today shows, gives a depiction or an insight into, because we, all, we read this reading after Easter. It's always read, because it's part of the glorious Easter readings. And it gives it an insight into what the two of the disciples, they were not apostles, because the 11 were assembled elsewhere in Jerusalem together. And they were gathered together in fear they were very much afraid of what was going to happen to them because they were afraid they were going to be persecuted or crucified. It is the lot of a lot of Christians today in the world. I'm just listening, I was listening yesterday, there were, there's 26 uh, Christians kidnapped in Nigeria at this time held in ransom. But what is holding them together, they will not relent or give up on their fate. Their lives are in danger. This, what I call fundamentalist a group, a, a breakaway sect, uh, or, or a, a, a breakaway sect, have them held up uh, uh, to ransom. So the, it is the same old story repeated over again. Back in Jerusalem, they were, as it were, afraid that once again that they were going to be, as it were, revenge will be taken them because Christ, which whom they thought was buried in the tomb, they was going to say, the curtains were sealed. No, a new reality, a new way of order, a new way of life was beginning. They were experiencing the risen Lord. The stone had been moved away from the tomb. The Mary and Magdalene and several went to the tomb. They found the glorious risen Lord. And what does the Lord convey to us? That within us, says St. Paul, is contained within our bodies, the seeds of imperishability. Every day we live, there's a certain dying in us. 
because we're a day shorter, number one. Number two, for anybody who's begun beyond the stage of maturity, life is fading away. As I say, we're not in here a lasting city. By any sense, life and life as we know today, as never before, is very uncertain. And a man who was very conscious of that was John O'Brien. John was very conscious because I saw him meet him there at the church, there back at the church during the week when he came in to pray. How often did he come in here? So often. But, uh, but the one, the reassuring hope, in fact, we spoke about the hope through the faith that, that, that faith gives us in Christ. The plank of our hope. In actual fact, every time we are celebrate Mass, Mass is connecting us. It's the link between heaven and earth. Every time we come to Mass, we're touching the point of whereby God links us. So any Catholic or Christian, technically speaking, should not be a stranger to God. But I know some are. They have lived lives and they are alien to God. And God only knows where they go. It's not for me to judge. But one of the one things is when we become familiar with God through being present at Mass, it's like just simply move into another room. In actual fact, you'll often see in the back of Mass cards, I'm only just gone beyond the line of sight. The person who's died, gone beyond the sight. We are now, as I said, living in soul, in spirit. In other words, we are within us, as St. Paul, the season of perishability. We transcend and go beyond what we have in this earth. And as I said, uh, it's all around us at the moment. Uh, that is very evident in reference when, when we take put in the context of this COVID that is very often time ravaging so much of the world at this time. But one of the beautiful truths of our Christian, of our, our faith is, is that God has provided us with a resource and a source and an anchor and a hope, friends, the Mass, when we come together at Mass. So John O'Brien, is rightfully placed here. This was the context where he so often has come to Mass here. And as I say, he was familiar with hearing the Word of God and coming to Mass in the Blessed Sacrament, as I say, in his life. So there was, there was both a communion and a union already happening, as I say, long before now. But I know, as I say, as I speak to John, John was very much afraid of this awful uh, virus that's around this time, and I know so many people as well are absolutely are riven with, with, with fear and anxiety with the fact of it being a reality of life today. But as it were, one way or another, at some stage, we will all have to die. That's one sure certain, me, you, everybody who is, kings, queens, the great people in the world, the presidents, whoever they are in the world, if anything, even they probably have a far, far greater difficulty than your average person in any way, because very often times they acted so high and powerful and mighty, emperors and kings and queens and powerful in the who ran big corporate situations and everything. Very often times you have to bow down before that. Nobody can buy ransom to go beyond that. Everybody who's ever come into this world, as I say, whether they're living will die, or who have come in this world have died, and it is. <clears throat> one sure certainty of life. It's a very humbling thought. John was a good, uh, was a family man, was very much anchor of his home, as it were, was an ordinary farmer's life, as I say, and, uh, and if you do the ordinary things well in everything in life, we don't have to, as I say, reach the high points of the so uh, of being re reaching the high pinnacles of the social light of life, as, as were to be the great achiever in the sight of God. All the Lord asks is that we do the ordinary things which John O'Brien did well, faithful and committed to his home up there in Count Killer. And this is where he is, where he, as I say, in farming there, as it were, I know he was close to the soil, to the earth. I can think of John as bordering on 80 years of age at this stage, and as I said, what a lot of changes have taken place over the years in John's life, as I say, coming from the horse and the plough and the harrow, and to the modern machinery that we have today and all the high-tech uh, farming that we have today, we are almost have overreached and gone beyond reach, if anything, maybe gone crazy altogether because we are filled with a world, as I say, to think that we are God's manipulation, uh, uh, can manipulate creation and its, itself. But in John's day, as it were, was used to with the raw crop rotation, farming, mixed farming, as it were. Everything was contained in the home. You could say in the times of John, Every home and every little village was self-sufficient. 
All you've got to do is just pick up one of the old guys' directory. It's a very interesting read. You want to take one of their books. I, I've got read gone through inside in the, the library and you'll see them. And there's where you see every little bridge, like be it Dreamer League or be it Doris, or be it Ballady Hub, wherever it may be, or Lep or Union Hall. They were all little self-enclosed units. They had their fares, they had their food, and everything was taken care of from the harness maker to the, 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 the butcher, to, to the person who made the bread, say, and all that, and the little pubs up here would have a sup and duck and come in and have an old chat in, 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 inside. And look how many shops in John Jammers growing up. This village was full, of, was full of shops. And there was a reformer trade. And the fair would come as well, which he would go to as well. And that was the way of life. But then go back to the farm. Then, and you were self-sufficient on the farm as well. Because you would provide all the needs, the, the, the food, the potatoes, the cabbage and everything. The, the hens, the turkey, the pigs, as I say, the cattle, and as I, everything. It was a very self-continued. It was there was something I think very rich, very wholesome, and very complete about olden life, as it were. They didn't worry about what happened in the stock exchange in New York and what happened over in London or somewhere out in Singapore. Their life went on regardless, as usual, and so did John's life as well. But as well, they, we do live in the modern of say world, as it were, whereby. We are connected, like we are the camera here today. We're connected via the web to so many people in the world, far from connectivity via these electronic means and no televisions or anything at that time when it was growing up, as it were. It was, as I say, the chat in the home, the visiting of the neighbor, as I say, the scripting and the gathering together. And that was the life of John. He loved the company, meeting with people. He was a chatty, as I say, talkative man, as I say. But we hope and pray that his ultimate and final conversation, we hope and pray that he's basking in the presence of God. May God reward him for his goodness and for his many acts, and the uh, Lord make him one with him now in his eternal kingdom as we pray for John uh, and commend them to the Lord this afternoon. One thing sure, every one of us will be someday where John is. The Lord grant us the graces, say to always be followed and to be close to Christ, just as John was. We now stand to pray. Now we please come up now for the prayers of intercession. Yeah. Come up. Seek, search, and you shall receive. And God does not fail in his promises and what he has said to us as we pray. For John, that God may ease his passing into new life. Lord, hear us. For all who have died, that God may give them a place in the kingdom of heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who love John and were close to him, that they may receive comfort and strength. Lord, hear us. Lord, For the doctors and nurses and staff of Cork University Hospital and Brandtree General Hospital, that God may reward them for their goodness. Lord, hear us. We pray for all our departed brothers and sisters. Today we pray for John Pears, Jeremiah Mary, Sister Nora, Brother Naz, Damon and Johnny. May John be reunited with them in God's kingdom where there is no more pain and suffering. Lord, hear us. For John, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may raise up on the last day. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are anyway affected or impacted by the virus at this time who are and who are carrying the weight or the fear or anxiety, Lord. Lord, may we see them through it, give comfort them and be their strength and be their inner hope of mind, body and soul. Lord, hear us. The brave, valiant and courageous people who are at the very interface of it, such as our doctors, our nurses, our attendants, our home helps, our public health nurses, uh, are, are in any way who are involved in providing meals and wheels are, in, are very much in the danger zones. Lord, in their effort to work on our behalf, Lord, keep them safe and protect them, guard them, O oh Lord, against this contagion. Lord, hear us. We pray as well for those who are frail 
elderly, vulnerable in any way, especially those as were who maybe carry with any anxiety or fear. I know John had a fear of this reality. But Lord, we pray as well for any of those who have exhibited and so many have at this time. Lord, be with their refuge and the strength and the help are close at hand. Lord, hear us. O saving Lord Jesus Christ, these are our prayers, Lord. We commend them and offer them up as we channel them all to through you, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Accept the sacrifice from our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Lord God, as we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings for the soul of our brother John, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find him a merciful judge through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up our hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In him the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, Lord, for your faithful life is changed not in it, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels, the archangels, the thrones, and the dominions of heaven. May our voices be one with theirs as we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. For you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, that by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like a dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For at the time he was betrayed, Jesus Christ willingly entered into his passion. He took the bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. But this is <coughs> the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us, worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partake of the body and the blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the whole world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Fintan, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, and the people of God. Remember our brother John, whom you have called from this world to yourself, granted as he was united with your son in a debt like his, may also be one with him, in his resurrection to Christ our Lord. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her husband and spouse, the Blessed Apostles, the Martyrs, Saint Governor, and all the saints who have pleased and done your will throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. God, Lord Jesus, has called, taught us to pray, so we now stand as we reach out to our Heavenly Father, because we've been baptized to call this great prayer as we seek God's kingdom every day in our lives and say, Our Father, Guim Shim Inish. And enter the holler and tallow. Marinita, her nap, honor only wood. To doing enough, August, ma, doing a vika, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace and may this mingling of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus bring us to eternal life. And all us receive it. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep safe for eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we son of the living God, you put up a little walk with the Holy Spirit, your death has brought life to the world. Give us baby a teaching of us, have your saving.
resurrection of life, a man who lives and believes in me will never suffer eternal death. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment dying. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment dying. Let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful, O Lord, eternal rest grant him. O Lord, let perpetual light shine upon him. Lord God, who so Jesus Christ left us the sacrament of his body and blood, food for our eternal journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother John may come to the eternal banquet of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So now, if you please stand now, we'll offer the prayers now of a commendation. Trusting in the Lord, we have gathered here and prayed for John. And now we come to that last farewell. But there is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see John again and enjoy his friendship, although we will depart and disperse as a congregation Sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joys of his kingdom. For therefore, let us console and comfort one another in faith. We now respond, receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ, the cause you, take it to himself. May the angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Eternal rest granted to him, O Lord, let perpetual light shine upon him. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother John. There is sure and certain hope that together with all who died in Christ, that he will rise with him on the last day. For we thank you for the blessings which we bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ Jesus. Most the Lord turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise for our brother John and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of our faith until we all meet in Christ and we're with you and with our brother forever through Christ, O Lord. Amen. May the saints and angels lead you on, escorting where Christ has gone. Now he has called you to come to him who sits above the seraphim. Come to the peace of Abraham and to the supper of the Lamb and come to the glory of the blessed and to perpetual light and rest. May the choirs of angels welcome at last his poor no longer, ye find eternal rest. Eternal rest grant unto his soul, O Lord, let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. John soul and souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. Martin, you say a few words now, please.
Hello, everyone. I was kindly nominated by my lovely family to give Dad's eulogy. I want to start off by thanking all of you who have been here today to celebrate Dad's life and to pay your respects. We are living in strange times at the moment with so many restrictions in place, and we know that there are many people who would be here today if they could be. Thank you to Father Liam Crowley for the wonderful service you have given today. Thank you to Pat and David Daly for all your help you have given us in organising Dad's funeral over the past few days. Thank you both for the professional and caring service you provided. It's very much appreciated. Uh, thank you to Pat and Padre Crowley, who had a hard few days in preparing Dad's grave. Um, a lot of rock had to be removed, which made our job a lot tougher. Uh, thank you to Brian and the organist for the beautiful music and singing today. And thank you to James, who is recording Dad's Funeral Mass today. So those who can't be here with us today will have the chance to watch the Mass online. Dad grew up on the family farm in Kionquilla. Uh, he was the youngest of three children. He had two older sisters, Nora, may she rest in peace, and Peggy, who loved him dearly, and they were the best of friends. Dad met Mam and they were married on the 3rd of November 1973. They reared eight of us on the family farm. Dad loved the farm and life and worked hard on the farm. Dad also used to grow his own crop of potatoes and vegetables. We have many memories of helping Dad with the potato crop and especially eating them. Dad also spent many years going to the bog in Goulons, cutting turf and we spent many a day in the bog helping out, against our will at most times. Dad's main pastime in life was road bowling. He was a great supporter and follower of the O'Driscoll family, Seahans. He was the best of friends with Tyga O'Driscoll, may he rest in peace, and they travelled to many a score together. Dad would always travel to support Teddy, Dennis and Sharon whenever they were bowling. There was many a pint shared afterwards together and the odd sing-song held after a day spent bowling, win or lose. Dad cherished, his, uh, cherished and loved his four grandchildren, Quiva, Rachel, Charlie and Harry. He always looked forward to when they would visit and stay over. He really enjoyed their company and the joy they would bring to the house. The stations in Kionkula and Gortinahur townland were always a special occasion that Dad used to enjoy attending. All the neighbours would gather together and share stories of past times. This is the one thing that we as a family have missed over the last few days, not being able to meet up properly with our neighbours, relatives and friends, as I'm sure there are plenty of stories that would have been shared about Dad growing up. We, as a family, are very grateful and thankful to all our wonderful neighbours, relatives and friends who have been very good to Ma'am and us over the past few days. Thank you to everyone who has been very thoughtful and generous to us and provided us with food and drinks, but most importantly, thank you for all your kind words and condolences. Thank you to everyone who has phoned, sent messages, flowers and most importantly, offered your condolences on Dad's passing. Dad lived a healthy and happy life up until a few years ago when he became ill. He fought hard and stayed strong to stay with us up until the very end. Unfortunately, Dad's fight for life ended last Monday when he passed away peacefully. We, as a family, want to say a huge thank you to the wonderful and caring staff of both Bantry General Hospital and Cork Union First Day Hospital who looked after and cared for Dad over the past number of weeks. They do an amazing job, and especially in these current difficult times. Finally, I would like to finish up with a reading that my sister Catherine has asked us to read on her behalf, as unfortunately, due to the travel restrictions, Catherine and her husband Nigel cannot be here today from the UK to celebrate Dad's funeral mass. until we meet again, Dad. A light from our lives has gone, a voice we loved is still, a place is vacant within our hearts which never can be filled. A bouquet of beautiful memories 
sprayed with a million tears. I wish God could have spared you, if just for a few more years. We hold you close within our hearts, and there you will remain to walk with us throughout our lives until we meet again. So rest in peace, dear Dad, and thanks for all you've done. We pray that God has given you the crown you've truly won. Your vacant place no one can fill. We miss you now and always will. Love, Catherine and Nigel. And I'll give the last few words to Dad. I know, I know, I know. Now let us take our brother John to his place of rest.